the main objective is to get these generators out so people can start using them for power. Understood. Understood. Okay. So, if I bring it off to you, you might be able to drop, drop them off and cook them down then. I don't think so. Okay. But we can we can talk about it. I just need to get the drop done. As soon as, they'll be here any minute. All right. So, this may be enough, but we may have to have more vehicles. So we are getting relief coming in, um, you know, from all over the place. And um, the chaos that we've experienced uh, a day or two before is now simmering down. We have law enforcement on the on the ground for the first time since the hurricane passed and they happen to keep law and order and so most people are getting are getting the resources they need to make it and so the tension is the tension is, is coming down a bit and so things are looking better how many people lost their lives in this area we had no loss like that in, in this in this area from cw to crown even um, thank god uh, everybody's alive and um you know trying to get back to some sense of normalcy uh, but it's, it, I can't say the same for Marsh Harbor and Treasure Gate. It's heartbreaking um, to see the devastation to this amazing uh, island and all the, the flora is gone and the, the homes are destroyed. It's um, heartbreaking to see that, to know what great people we are here trying to help and serve. We're no longer seeing a ton of acute issues. What we are really seeing is um, a lot of chronic issues that require medications that are unavailable or, um, or you know, today we helped with some muscle strains and, uh, and, and injuries. That's the majority of the things that we're seeing. The people here are so amazing because they're so happy and pleased with anything that that they are given or that just they're thrilled to see us. And anyone, they appreciate all the help they can get. So we had done a drop again up to Foxtown at one of the farthest points in the North Abacos. And while we were unloading, a truck just pulled right in frantically. A gentleman jumped out and talked to one of our medic corps guys, Lawson, and made him aware that his grandchildren were stranded up the road near a washed out bridge and that he needed help rescuing them. There again was a language barrier. We weren't really sure what he was saying, but he just said, please go find my grandchildren and bring them to me. And I asked what ages they were. He said 10, six, and three. So I jumped in the helicopter real quick and I told Justin, hey, we have to go look for these three kids. And his answer to me is, we have no fuel and we're running out of daylight. And uh, we knew it was just a God-given thing and we said, we're gonna try it. And so we headed down the road. He said, do you know where this is? And I said, no, I don't, but we'll find it. Continued down the road about 12 miles and we discovered a bridge that was completely washed out from the storm and there stood the three girls on one side of the road just hovered to get hovered, hovered together and their parents on the complete opposite side of the washed out road just waving their hands frantically. About to take a crew to Nassau. Off of the rough island. Sorry, Alex. I Things are going that. good.
Pasa Bremo. Oh, bien. Todo bien. Bienvenido. Gracias, gracias. Primera vez en los Estados Unidos. ¿Quién me falta? ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se dice finally? Finalmente. 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 Sí. Yeah, finalmente los Estados Unidos. First time ever. 85 and 60 years old. Yeah, ya también. Paparazzi, paparazzi. They call me paparazzi. I always got my phone. I take a picture. My son married one of the daughters. Oh, okay. What was the most difficult thing for you to see down there? You know, we've been, uh, we know the children in the mud. Uh, we've been ministering to that area for, for almost a decade. Um, we have videos of kids that are no longer alive. Uh, we have uh, videos of people that have lost their family members uh, that, that are there that we're ministering to that, you know, and so it's, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it really is. It's not about buildings and things. It's about people, about lives. And you see these precious children uh, that are just, uh, uh, that are really, uh, I mean, that's why we're doing it. You see these, these people that are, lives have been totally uh, dis disrupted and impacted. And, and I think when people look into the face of those children, uh, it's, uh, it gets real and it gets significant. It's not just about the buildings. It's about the lives that uh, need our help right now. Right now we're so frustrated. I can't even talk like that because we lost, like I say, we lost everything. But we thank God before because we're still alive. Me and fam my family, we're good. It's gone. It's gone. But we could say that it, it, it finished. We don't know how long that could stay to get repair or something like that. Yeah. What's next for you and your family? I can't say nothing. You don't know? No. You don't know what's next? How can the rest of the world help you right now? They, they, if they could take me somewhere to stay, to live, I would appreciate it. That would be a good thing for us. Dad taking good care of you? Yes. Okay. And what do you have here? Snacks. You got snacks? Uh-huh. Were you hungry? Uh-huh.
coming to you live from Freeport in the Bahamas. This is one of the hardest hit areas after Hurricane Dorian. We are at the port and what we are seeing here is amazing. It's going to restore your faith in humanity. We have dozens of volunteers and crew members from Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. They prepared 20,000 meals, hot and cold. They have 47,000 bottles of water. They've got supplies. And, and this morning, in fact, just now, they're unloading it and they're putting it into trucks from NEMA, which is the Bahamian version of FEMA in the United States. And then NEMA is going to give it out, we believe, to churches, to nonprofits, and to people who need it down here. How dire is the situation out there? Well, I mean, we have no utilities currently. Um, people can't cook. Um, people are also stressed out and traumatized from the worst hurricane ever to hit the Bahamas and probably the country. What can Americans watching this right now do to help out the Bahamian people? Um, I think we need a lot of support and it's not always just food and water, it's the psychological um, be benefits, it's talking to people, it's coming to help, people got to clean up and if you drive around the community you can see where the water went into their homes and all the stuff that was ruined is on the side of the street for pickup. What's it been like the past week for you? Um, dealing with the wife and kids and just uh, sleeping and just having hot flashes or remembrance of what, what took place, the, the, the storm, the disaster, the death toll. Uh, it's just horrible. Just time to get out of this place for now. Have you lost friends or family members? My grandmother, I lost my grandmother, Miss Modena. Um, yeah, she got swept away in one of the uh, flash floods. Yeah, it took her. So, and they found her body a few days after the storm. So, yeah, that was her. That was terrifying and horrible. Was she there with you? Uh, actually, no. She was at her place, and I w we were in different locations. Hey, we're gonna go ahead. We'll see you there. Uh, the field clear. friend at our church and um, she wanted to check on her mother that was on Manowar Island and uh, we flew down out of Destin to West Palm Beach and met her brother there and we got them out to Manowar from West Palm and that's basically the intention was to get down there to see what we could do and check on their family. We knew that it was going to be bad but we really weren't sure first of all, in what capacity or what capacity we would even be able to help. Yeah, we were happy to be used. I mean, we got there and um, supplies were showing up by a small aircraft, a large aircraft to Marsh Harbor, and we were able to get organized with uh, Metacorp guys at Marsh Harbor and start loading up supplies and getting them out to the areas that were affected the worst and were hard to, hard to access by boat or by road. We dropped in water, we dropped in uh, food supplies, in some cases a little bit of clothing, diapers if they had babies, um, just anything, uh, toothbrushes, I mean everything you could think that you could need when your entire you know, house has been destroyed you need you know, to be resupplied. This was very hands on, it was so much more than just dropping supplies but being able to be there for an emotional connection, just being able to talk to people, seeing what their needs are and you know, checking medically, seeing who wanted to be evacuated out, uh, if they were gonna stay, what their needs were to be able to remain in the places that they were. On the way back, as we flew over an area, um, Vic pointed out, he said, hey, look down there on the ground. Was there anybody down there? Or have you guys checked that area out? And um, I kind of dismissed it. I said, well, that's just trash blown around, you know, maybe a, maybe a dump or something. I don't think it's any, anybody's, you know, anybody's there. I haven't seen anybody wave at us. So we flew right by it, um, kind of dismissed it at that time. And uh, the next day I was flying back and um, I said, let's just stop in there. Let's just kind of see what's going on. And as we landed, um, we saw people one at a time kind of pop up out of the rubble. And the, uh, the guy, one of the EMS guys or medical staff guys with me, I said, hey, why don't you go out there and see what their needs are, see what's going on. 
And as he was out there, you know, more and more people started surrounding him. And we all sat in that helicopter with anticipation of what, what are they saying, what's going on. And he got back in there and he's like, yeah, these people, they need food, they need water, they need supplies. Um, he's like, um, so, you know, what can you guys do? So I said, yeah, we'll get some supplies to him immediately. So I dropped off that medical staff and came back, got my wife and told her, I said, hey, that, that, that place we flew over, remember that place? She's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, there are people there and they need help, they need stuff. So we instantly started loading up that helicopter with water, food, whatever we could and uh, made an immediate drop there that same day. They were incredible. From the time we hit the ground, they just circled around, waited for us patiently to unload the supplies, and then just raised their hands up in praise. Uh, and just so grateful. They just circled around to me and did a big group hug, all 20, 30 people. And uh, then they started dancing around. We turned around and snapped a picture but just incredibly words cannot describe. And I think with the language barrier, the universal understanding was that hands up in the air, dancing in praise. You did this in Puerto Rico? Yes, sir. How does this compare? I was hoping Puerto Rico would be the worst disaster we ever saw, but we were wrong, unfortunately. This is, this is much greater, in my opinion. Why? It's flatter, everything is more flattened. From what I'm seeing, it's a greater devastation in terms of the buildings and everything just flattens. We're setting up a base camp right now at a house that was offered to us and so we're fully stocked and supplied and ready to go and once we get our bearings and we understand the holes that need to be filled then we'll be able to bring more people in to help. Gainesville Fire Rescue's Urban Search and Rescue Team, which is part of uh, Task Force 8. And what we did was an ADSAR mission, so an aerial deployment for search and rescue into Marsh Harbor. We've been here about four days now. We've been assisting the locals with search and rescue in an area called the Peas, which was one of the hardest hit areas on the island. So uh, we've conducted search and rescue, looking for any anybody that may still be alive, and also assisting in locating human remains and, and uh, assisting locals in removing I know that's tough. What have you found so far? So in the area that we searched, uh, we probably searched about 50% of the area called the Peas. Uh, during that time, uh, we located 10 human remains and uh, had the opportunity to rescue one canine. I know that you're a first responder and, and you've seen a lot, but tell me about the toll on you and your team as, as far as finding these remains of people that lost their lives. So that's something that, uh, you know, that we have to deal with normally in the fire service, but uh, generally not on this level and not with this devastation. Uh, I would say you know, equal, equal to finding the remains was speaking to the family. And we would occasionally encounter people that would tell us, like, my, my son or my, you know, my loved one was found today. So that was very heartfelt, and that was one of the, one of the reasons that, uh, that we assisted with that mission is we wanted to bring some closure to the local families. Do you feel like you've been able to make a difference? I do. That was one of the, one of the first things uh, that happened whenever whenever we hit the island was uh, we talked with a local and they thanked us for uh, coming to be able to give closure to some of the families. So that mission sort of hit home with us. Jose, come over here. Hold it, hold it right there, guys. Come on, come on, big boy. Right there, buddy. Bring him right out the sand.
here in Marsh Harbor. You get around however you can. We caught a ride on this pickup truck. It's smashed, but it's still running. The driver had to siphon fuel to keep it going. And a few moments ago, we picked up these two women who are trying to get a ride to the airport. Room for two more? Yeah, if they want to hop in, yeah. You need a ride? You going to the airport? Yeah, come on, come on. Come on home. Oh. You want to sit up here with me? Uh, that might be difficult. We're going to have to get a little more stuff. Here we go. Let me know when everybody's safe. Good. Yeah, just be careful. You're good. How bad's your house? Uh, it's destroyed. It's totally destroyed. Is your family okay? Yeah, they're great. Thanks. And what are you doing? What's next? Um, I'm heading into Nassau right now, so I'm not sure from here. It's a mad rush, right? You want to get off the island? Yes. What's it like been living here? Nice. It was a really, really nice place to live. What do you need right now? Um, food, clothing. And my vehicle is destroyed. It has a lot of damages, but hopefully I'll get it sorted out. Are you holding on to faith? Yes, definitely. Riding out in the storm. Terrible. Tell me about it. The wave was splashing. The all the windows burst open. And the water was high. The water was being big wave. And that's all. How'd you survive? We had that. He closed the door. He he got caught in his hand. And that's all. You got your family here with you? Yes, sir. How bad was it? It was terrible. It was terrifying. Tell me. Tell me what, what you went through. Um, the water went... We were in a two-story house, and the water went all the way up to our house. The windows, they shattered in our faces. It was just terrible. But you've got everybody accounted for? Yes, sir. What was it like living after? <laughs> it was unsanitary, very... No water, no food, no clothing. Everything lost during the storm, during the hurricane. So, uh, what, what can people do? What can people do to help right now? Um, they can send stuff for the people of Abaco. Is like, the aid getting to you? Mm, some help, some. What, what do people need the most? Um, Food, clothing, water, clean water, anything really, anything. And you have how many kids? Just one. One kid? Yes, sir. Okay. And he's being strong, huh? Yes, sir. That's Carlito? Yes. Where are you, what's next? Um, trying to come off of this island, start a new life from somewhere else. In, off the Bahamas? Yeah. Where would that be? America. One Jinky. Who's this? Jinky. One Jinky. You're on camera, Jinky. You're on camera. You heading out? Yes. You live here? Yes. What's it? Uh, what's it? What's it been like? What is it? Six days? Six days? You know. Well, well, I was stuck in the car for two days, stuck in a a shelter for two days. Then uh, after that, it was really it was frustrating, depressing. But we had to fight 
to survive, you know. What do you What do you mean? Well, uh, the water supplies came in at late at the end. I had my dog and myself only one gallon of water for two days, and he drank most of it. <laughs> and I, I got trapped on the highway because I live near the water. So did it was you, a bit did you of. Did lose a... any friends? No, well, well, I knew a couple of guys who's passed away, you know, but uh, luckily. I got saved after the third day, you know, I was stuck right on the water. But you lost everything? Everything, everything, everything. A couple of clothes, but this is actually dog food. It's dog food? That's all dog stuff. Not one thing belonging to me. This is what you got? <laughs> That's it right there. <laughs> Where are you from, Scotland? Scotland, yes. I've been in the Bahamas 23 years. What personally have you had to deal with? Like, I'm, like the, I, I'm a middle class neighborhood, so they're not targeting me. Right now, they're going after the tourist homes. There's a lot of millionaires, tourists living in there, but they, you know, it's, you know, safe, so, you know. Like, I, my neighborhood is like, I have tons of dogs, plus all of the neighbor's dogs, all of their fences fell down, so like, there's pit bulls running everywhere in my neighborhood that I'm feeding, and all of them barking all night long, looters trying to get in there, they're barking and chasing, like, I, I mean, it's just like, I'm, I'm ready to snap. And like, you're, you're heavily armed? Yeah, yeah. Have you had to fire at anybody? No, I haven't, no. But your friends have? Yes, my friends have. Like, that lady I know, like, she had, she had to, like, shoot at him three times to make him turn back. Scary. Yeah. How do you sleep? I, I haven't. This is one of the most difficult things that we have seen so far in the Bahamas. We had hundreds of people get off ferries like these ones here. They came from the Abaco Islands, the hardest hit from Hurricane Dorian. Many people dead. So many lost their homes and everything that they own. Now they are here at the port of Nassau trying to find out what is next. They've gotten a little bit of food. They have water, but for so many of them, they are homeless. They're without resources. They're without transportation and they have no money. The first boat came in at 3 a.m. So I got here like about 2.45 in the morning. We came with water and some care packs. And again, um, the majority of the first crew that came in at 3 a.m. were Haitians. That boat also came in from Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We spoke to some of them who had horrific stories to tell us, and they are still telling us that there's large numbers of persons still left behind. Right here, right now, what we're doing and see what the people need, and already we start calling over there and to see, you know, stuff that we can bring over here. And we are um, hoping in the near future we can come and conduct an, a medical um, a mission. We are based in uh, Broward County in Miami Dade County, Florida. And uh, right now, the need that we see is uh, they need air mattresses at the shelters. The second one at the church, they don't have uh, mattresses. So the people have blankets and sleeping on the floor. So after what they've been through for the last week, so what they can need, we all can understand, is a warm, at least they cannot have a warm bed, but they can have a mattress to sleep on.
My name is uh, uh, Jim, Jimbo Stockton, and um, we have an organization called Adventures in God's Creation uh, that has a kind of a sub-ministry called Island Crisis Flyers, Rescue Relief Flights. And so we've been just actively involved in the Bahamas for the last several years running relief flights. And, and it's so crazy when, when airplanes are running water, you know, because but these when the islands get hit, the water goes out and people, and that's the first thing that's needed. So. It wasn't easy. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's not pretty. It's not the pretty Bahamas that most people expect to see. You know, it's muggy, it's hot, there's mosquitoes, and, and, um, and the water is all churned up. You don't have that pretty blue. Down there. So what's really important, uh, I think, is, is we're taking it directly to the people. Uh, because it, and that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is, because we're not always the first flight in after the hurricane, uh, but we're typically and frequently a, the first supplies that hurricane victims actually receive, uh, which it, it just gets bottlenecked in the bureaucracy before it gets out to them. And so it, it's great to be able to provide, uh, you know, survival type food uh, right at that, at that time and you know, share some love and compassion and, and, and give the people hope. You were literally dropping it in. <laughs> literally dropping it in, yeah. What were the biggest needs immediately? Well, I, I call it like phase one and phase two and phase three. Phase one is more evacuation, survival food, uh, water food. Uh, you know, um, it, it's kind of the biggest need going in, you know, more of the Christ survival type stuff. And then phase two, which I think we're moving to, and we're in the process of moving to right now, is more stabilization, where things get stabilized. And then phase three would be the rebuilding process. And so, uh, so it's moving into this stabilization to where everybody can kind of catch their breath and have some shelter over their head, have some food and water uh, that's flowing, and then, um, and then from there it'll move to the, the rebuilding. What's next? How can we continue to support the Bahamas? You know, I, I, again, it's a stabilization thing. I think they need to be talking rebuilding. They need to be, we need to just mobilize the troops, keep it in the forefront. Uh, particularly you guys and so forth. I mean, you've been right in the thick of it. You know, I've been with you right in the thick of it, and it's uh, um, and 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 talk rebuilding, get them back in their homes, get them back uh, on their island, and um, and and get it flourishing again. You know, support the Bahamas. You know, support the Bahamas where, wherever you go in the Bahamas. Just uh, uh, they need our, our our love and support. We're now in Stewart, Florida at a small private airport that has become the hub for the donations leaving from the U.S. People are taking U-Haul trucks, unloading from all across the southeast. It truly is an amazing effort. We had about 200 cases of hurricane supplies. This is absolutely going to save people and help people out.
the main objective is to get these generators out so people can start using them for power. Understood. Understood. Okay. So, I bring it talk to you. You might be able to drug, drug them off the Cooper Sound then. I don't think so. Okay. But we can we can talk about it. I just need to get the drop done. As soon as they'll be here any minute. All right. So this may be enough, but we may have to have more vehicles. So we are getting relief coming in, um, you know, from all over the place. And um, the chaos that we've experienced uh, a day or two before is now simmering down. We have law enforcement on the, on the ground for the first time since the hurricane passed. And they happen to keep law and order. And so most people are getting, are getting the resources they need to make it. And so the tension, is, the tension is, is coming down a bit. And so things are looking better. How many people lost their lives in this area? We had no lost lives in, in, this, in this area from CW to Crown Haven, um, thank God. Uh, everybody's alive and, um, you know, trying to get back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, but it's, it, I can't say the same for Marsh Harbor and Treasure Gate. It's heartbreaking um, to see the devastation to this amazing uh, island and all the, the flora is gone and the, the homes are destroyed. It's um, heartbreaking to see that, to know what great people we are here trying to help and serve. We're no longer seeing a ton of acute issues. What we are really seeing is um, a lot of chronic issues that require medications that are unavailable or, um, or you know, today we helped with some muscle strains and, uh, and, and injuries. That's the majority of the things that we're seeing. The people here are so amazing because they're so happy and pleased with anything that that they are given or that just they're thrilled to see us. And anyone, they appreciate all the help they can get. We had done a drop again up to Foxtown at one of the farthest points in the North Abacos. And while we were unloading, a truck just pulled right in frantically. A gentleman jumped out and talked to one of our medic corps guys, Lawson, and made him aware that his grandchildren were stranded up the road near a washed out bridge and that he needed help rescuing them. There again was a language barrier. We weren't really sure what he was saying, but he just said, please go find my grandchildren and bring them to me. And I asked what ages they were. He said 10, six, and three. So I jumped in the helicopter real quick and I told Justin, hey, we have to go look for these three kids. And his answer to me is, we have no fuel and we're running out of daylight. And uh, we knew it was just a God-given thing and we said, we're gonna try it. And so we headed down the road. He said, do you know where this is? And I said, no, I don't, but we'll find it. Continued down the road about 12 miles and we discovered a bridge that was completely washed out from the storm and there stood the three girls on one side of the road just hovered to get huddled hovered together and their parents on the complete opposite side of the washed out road just waving their hands frantically about to take a crew to Nassau off of the rough island. Sorry, Alex. I Things are going good.
Oh, bien. Bienvenido. Primera vez en los Estados Unidos. ¿Qué me falta? ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se dice finally? Finalmente. 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 Sí. Finalmente los Estados Unidos. First time ever. 85 and 60 years old. Yeah, ella también. <laughs> they call me paparazzi. <laughs> My son married one of the daughters. Oh, okay. <laughs> What was the most difficult thing for you to see down there? You know, we've been, uh, we know the children in the mud. Uh, we've been ministering to that area for, for almost a decade. Um, we have videos of kids that are no longer alive. Uh, we have uh, videos of people that have lost their family members uh, that, that are there that we're ministering to that, you know, and so it's, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it really is. It's not about buildings and things. It's about people, about lives. And you see these precious children uh, that are just, uh, uh, that are really, uh, I mean, that's why we're doing it. You see these, these people that are, lives have been totally uh, just disrupted and impacted. And, and I think when people look into the face of those children, uh, it's, uh, it gets real and it gets significant. It's not just about the buildings. It's about the lives that uh, need our help right now.